You know, well, Jimi Hendrix was considered one of the best rock guitarists of all time. Amen. You know, you go with Eric Clapton, uh, Jimmy Page, Peter Townsend, uh, gosh, I'm going to miss some. But anyway, he's considered Jeff Beck, Dwayne Alden. He's considered one of the best. And what's really, he was left handed. Yeah. Now, Larry, you might help me on this. He was left handed. But he had to. He was poor, and he had to play the guitar upside down. Is that, is that correct? So I mean, that, to, to Larry, that means something. But to you and I, I couldn't begin to play it right here. So, but anyway, but anyway, you know, his his claim, his fame time was '66 and 1970. You know, his group was called the Jimi Hendrix Experience, and one of the songs was "Are You Experience." Now, I, now, personally, I wasn't a very big Jimi Hendrix fan, but uh, you know, you know, his rendition of the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. <laughs> but anyway, he, you know, he had a song called "Are You Experienced?" Well, sadly, the Jimi Hendrix experience was not good. He died at 27 due to drinking and drugging. You know, we all want to have good experiences. We all want to have good experiences. And we want to keep our bad experiences to a minimum. Am I, am I correct in that? Am I the only one that thinks that way? Come on, I've got this one. I want, good, I want as many good experiences as I have, and I want the least amount of bad experiences. Is that an amen? amen. All right, there we go. All right. Make sure we're on the same page. All right. You know, I've preached on the spirit experience recently. I've preached on the sacrament experience. And I've also preached on the communion experience. They all have one thing in common. The Jesus experience. They all have that in common. Everyone needs to have the Jesus experience. I'm slow to judge these things, but I doubt Jimi Hendrix ever had it. I don't know. That's between him and God. But, but the lifestyle, you don't lead that kind of lifestyle after having the Jesus experience. You know, most of the time. So, but anyway, I doubt he ever had it. You know, the Jesus experience is the key to a better life on this earth and for your eternal destiny. Think about that. The Jesus experience is the key to a better life on this earth and for your eternal destiny. I want us to look at one of the most dramatic Jesus experiences in the New Testament. There's many. But this is one of my favorite. Let's look at Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. Now, let me put this in context. This happens, as I'm going to read here in verse 1 in just a second, this happens six days after the famous give and take of Jesus with his disciples and he said, when Jesus says, who do the people say that I am? And they go through different litany of Old Testament characters. And then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter says, why you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You are the Son of God. And of course Jesus has on this rock, I'll build my church, and all that kind of stuff. So, we pick this story up. So, six days after that, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and brought them to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared with him. 
talking to him. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish. I will make three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were much afraid. Jesus touched them, and came to them and touched them and said, Arise, do not be afraid. And lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself. This is thought to have happened on Mount Hermon, which is a mountain in Lebanon, or southern Lebanon at the present time. Called the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John see Jesus' appearance radically changed. You got to think now. They walking around, you know, in their Middle Eastern garments and clothes, dusty as they might be, and dirty and all that kind of stuff. Walking around just like the, the clothes you and I wear today. See people at the mall and all this kind of stuff. All of a sudden, they go up to this high mountain. And they see Jesus' appearance radically change. It says, Scripture says he was transfigured. Transfigured means to be transformed into something more beautiful and glorious. His face shined like the sun. His clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah, two key characters of the Old Testament, appeared. And talk to Jesus. Now think about it. Peter, James, and John are sitting here witnessing this. You know, just get, put yourself in this situation. Put yourself on Mount Hermon. Well, Peter, James, and John, Wyatt, and Pierre, whoever else wants to be there. All three are seen in their heavenly glory. Moses and Elijah disappeared. Peter is very excited to be there. <laughs> hey, let's build, he says, the tabernacles. Let's build some monuments. Let's build some memorials. we got to do something about this. Let's, let's make a pile of rocks over here or something. My goodness, this is such a great thing. we got to do something to memorialize this where we can remember this. I guess about the time he was saying all that, all of a sudden, they became frightened because a cloud started coming in. You know, I, I, I suspect they knew it wasn't weather related. There was some kind of divineness in this cloud. They see that cloud overshadows them, and all of a sudden, this voice that I have heard, many of y'all heard me say it many times, when I think of the voice of God, I think of Charles. Your voice of God can be somebody. It can be female, male, but I hear Charlton has his voice. That's just me. God says, This is my chosen son. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. Hearing the voice of God, the disciples remain, remain frightened until Jesus touches them. So they see all of this. They're excited enough to want to build some little monuments. I guess I want to come back and do that later. And then all of a sudden this cloud overshadows them. And they hear the voice of God and they fall, fall down. It looks like they faint. They said they just fall down and take their head. That's what I imagine. Oh my God. <coughs> Jesus comes up, touches them. When they look around, they only see Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a very dramatic Jesus experience. Now, you know, I, I don't know if there's a 
part two and part three. Maybe I should go through some of the Jesus experiences in the Bible. I'm going to mention some here in just a second. But my goodness, this is such a dramatic Jesus experience. You know, they knew this guy. They'd been walking around with him. The closest thing to this experience of it was when Jesus was baptized. They heard the voice of God and they saw the dove come down. Seeing Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. You know, to, to Jewish guys, common Jewish folks during that time period to see Moses and Elijah. Most everybody is familiar with Moses. Everybody, maybe not as familiar with Elijah. You know, Elijah is the one that ascended into heaven. One of the few people that ascended into heaven without dying. You see, Moses, Elijah, Elijah, transfigured. Hearing God speak, can you imagine? Can you imagine what that must be like? Oh, Lord, let us see a vision like that. Oh, Lord, let us feel your presence. I may fall down on my face, too, but I know that you'll come and touch. Feel your joy. Oh Lord, let us have dreams and visions of your greatness. Amen. You know, it must have been an amazing experience to say the least. I mean, I just can't, this is incomprehensible. To the human mind, it's beyond human comprehension, beyond mind. It's beyond mind. You know, Paul had. The Jesus experience on the Damascus Road. That's one of the most famous ones in the book of Acts. It's hard to use that experience. And everybody's familiar with that. You know, he sees Jesus. Nobody else sees him. Paul changes from a persecutor of Christians to a, the first Christian missionary. He sees and hears Jesus. Again, I already talked about John the Baptizer. And all that group when Jesus was baptized, what happened? Heaven's up, heaven open. The Spirit came upon Jesus, and the voice of God spoke. Later in history, both Martin Luther and John Wesley had the Jesus experience and changed history. We would all be Roman Catholics. Him. Nothing against Roman Catholic. That was the way it would be if Martin Luther and John Wesley hadn't had their Jesus experience. Now, nowhere nearly as close, nowhere even a smidgen as dramatic as all these instances I've read to. I had a Jesus experience in June of 1968. Now let me say this, I didn't put it in my notes here, but the Jesus experience is not a one-time thing. We should live the Jesus experience every day. We can have many experiences. We have, should have experience with Jesus every day, like with the sign experience Jesus. That's something we should do every day. But I had my Jesus experience in June of 1968, if y'all friends with me on Facebook, you saw put some pictures up there, you know, 50 years and roughly two months ago, I gave my life to Christ at Sardis Baptist Church up there in Gainesville. You know, many of you sitting here today, I don't know most everybody, know most everybody's spiritual state, condition, because I talked to you, have had the Jesus experience. I look around. Now, some of you might not. Might not. You know, and that's not for me to judge. It's not for me to judge. That's between you and God. You know if you've had the Jesus experience. You know, if you 
need to. You need to have the Jesus experience. You know, today, two young people have had the Jesus experience recently. You know, if you haven't figured it out yet, the Jesus experience is when you ask Christ to be your Lord and Savior. That first time. Again, hopefully that starts a chain of Jesus experiences throughout your life. Hopefully you have a Jesus experience when you come here to church and worship. I do. <laughs> I was excited about I'm excited about this message. I you know, I get stuck, you know, I, I, I know it comes out when I preach sometimes. I get fired up putting these messages together, you know. But yeah, there's two young people here today. There's actually a third one, but due to unforeseen circumstances, if you're not able to make it, uh, I've had the Jesus experience. Again, they asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. You know, today, they're going to make a public acknowledgement of that by being baptized. Tara's family suffered a tragedy back in April that were all, it's all too painful and all too familiar with us here. And Tara, I can't specifically remember our conversation, so I want to paraphrase it too. But she just basically decided, you know, I, I want to be baptized. I want to publicly Confess my faith in Christ. Is that the gist of the conversation? Yes, it was an intense, emotional time. To say the least. And it still hurts. But you know, I'm going to say this and I don't feel proud of you. In some ways, I think you're also standing with me. Christ was raised from the dead, you, will, you are saved. And I ask y'all, I ask 